Today we'll talk about rubella. Rubella infection it causes a well recognized exanthem of particular importance and it also causes a risk to the fetus if infection occurs during pregnancy. So it causes infection in children and adolescents as well as uh, it can cause infections during pregnancy wherein it will have a threat to the neonate as well. The synonyms for uh, rubella would be German measles, also it is called as third disease. Commonly it is rubella is seen in uh, childhood and adolescence is the most common age group that it presents with and um, the incidence is reduced in, uh, these days because of the immunization. Because of the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine that's available, the number of cases are reduced. Uh, history, a little bit about the history. It was first described in the mid-18th century. It was present uh, since a very long time. And uh, the first clinical description was given by Frederick Hoffman in 1740. Uh, Henry Reel coined the term rubella. Rubella in Latin means little red. And that's why it's called as rubella. The red colored lesions that we get on the skin. So that's the Latin word. Etiology, rubella uh, virus is the only member of the ruby virus genus and that belongs to the family of Toga viridae. So the family is Toga viridae and the genus is the ruby virus and it's the only member of that family. It does not require any vector for it to spread. Okay, so there's no vector which carries the virus here. 12 genotypes have been identified. Four types, uh, IE, IG, 1 and 2B are there which cause most of the, that is 70% of the infections caused by these types of the uh, genotypes of virus. And the virus is an enveloped single-stranded RNA virus. So this is a single-stranded RNA genome which it has. The transmission, the transmission I told you we don't require any vectors here. So how it is transmitted? It is transmitted by respiratory route and uh, it replicates in the nasopharynx and in the lymph nodes also. So as it enters the respiratory tract, there it multiplies in the nasopharynx as well as in the lymph nodes. So it spreads from one person to another person. And the virus is found in the blood 5 to 7 days after infection and it will spread then throughout the body. So virus will enter through the respiratory route and then it is seen in the blood at, uh, after around 5 to seven after a week it will be seen in the blood and once the blood is infected then it will spread everywhere throughout the body and the person is infectious one week before and one week after the appearance of the rash so after this virus has entered the blood and everywhere it will cause rash so person is infectious before and after appearance of rash as well clinical features here the incubation period is about 15 to 21 days okay so around two to three weeks is the incubation period of this particular virus and then it most commonly the see all of these viral infections are seasonal right and this particular viral infection happens in the spring season so this is the season wherein we see this uh, disease uh, occurring and then as i told you adolescence and young adults childhood disease it is mostly and after this incubation period of two to three weeks is completed the prodrome is seen the constitutional symptoms of there is uh, the patient will have fever headache malaise cough sore throat all of that symptoms and all of those will subside and then the rash will start so what is the skin lesion that we see here we see light pink macules that is patches patch like lesions which is not raised to papules and then on the uh, they appear on the first day of, uh, of the lesion and uh, they appear on the cheeks here okay, in a butterfly pattern on the both sides of the cheeks they appear these red colored macules and papules and then after those cheeks are affected they can spread to the retro auricular area they can also spread down or they can go down accordingly to the trunk and extremities as well so face is affected retro auricular area is affected then they spread downwards okay and on the second day what happens the face uh, which is rash was there on the face and that will clear and whatever the macules were there on the tongue will coalesce and rash on the limbs will become more discreet so it spreads cordially it is first phase then trunk then limbs like that it goes on affecting individual lesions are very small they are elevated red papules often with peripheral blanching also can be seen okay so there's an enanthem of if there's anything skin on the skin it's called exanthem on the mucous membrane it's called enanthem okay so there's this enanthem of red dull macules or petechiae confined to the soft palate either in the soft palate or in the uvula you see and that is called as forsheimer's sign okay that is seen in rubella here and 20 percent of the patients during the prodromal period or first day of the rash you see this macule which appears on the soft palate or the uvula that is called as Forsheimer sign. Then not only the skin, the lymph nodes also can be affected here. They can be lymphadenopathy. Most common lymph nodes affected would be the cervical lymph nodes, post auricular and suboccipital lymph nodes. So if to palpate the lymph nodes if a child presents with fever and everything. So these lymph nodes also will be enlarged here. Also they can be conjunctivitis, testalgia may be present. Neutropenia again can be seen. So you can see here on the baby on the back, the maculopapular rash which is present along with the suboccipital lymph nodes enlargement here you can see and again here on the trunk you can see the micropapular rashes.
what complications it can cause like any other viral infection it can also cause arthritis arthralgia encephalitis late progressive panencephalitis neuritis arthritis thrombocytopenia reduced platelet count can be there and this highest risk of transmission during the first trimester that is 80% so if the pregnant woman is affected in the first trimester then 80% chances of the neonate or the fetus getting affected is there okay so rubella in pregnancy is an important uh, topic it's an important thing for us to understand so here uh, the prenatal damage was uh, produced by the rubella was first it was first noted by greg in australia in 1941 the disease was present since a long time but he first recognized that it can be seen in pregnant women and can be transmitted to, to the fetus as well so if the mother is only like uh, 11 weeks less than 11 weeks pregnant then there is 85% chance of the infant getting affected okay so if the mother is between 12 to 16 weeks of gestation the risk will reduce to 35% so after this the infant will be affected even after 13, 16 weeks but then severity will be red less it will be not as severe as it is in the first trimester okay so less than 11 for 11 weeks means um, it's very severe 80 percent chances of the new infant getting affected is present here okay so the features of congenital uh, rubella syndrome are seen and that is mainly neurological so cns is mostly affected here uh, less than six weeks heart and eyes will be affected less than 16 weeks deafness and mental deficiency is seen so this mental retardation and the microcephaly the small head which is seen here they may not be apparent until one year or more after the prenatal infection so after one year we'll get to know that there's mental retardation deafness microcephaly okay so along with that it can also have the most frequent manifestation in the new it would be thrombocytopenic purpura so there will be reduced platelets which causes purpura like lesions that is the bluish reddish colored uh, lesions on the skin okay and they may be very transient also and these particular lesions are called as blueberry muffin sign you've seen muffins right so they look like muffins and they'll be blueberry muffins because the color would be like that bluish violet color like that they'll be so that's why it's called blueberry muffin sign okay and the children with congenital rubella syndrome they are contagious until at least one year until at least one year of age, they are contagious, okay? To take the neonate out of isolation, you have to do two cultures. You have to get two negative cultures, which are obtained one month apart, okay? After three months of age. After the baby is three months of age, you have to take two negative cultures. And that has to be one month apart. Only then you can say that the infant is free of the infection. So the manifestations of congenital rubella syndrome would be, will be sensory neural hearing loss. So deafness is one important feature here. Eye manifestations would be cataract, glaucoma, retinopathy. Retina can be damaged here. Okay, cornea, retina can be damaged. And lens can be damaged. Then congenital cardiac defects can be there. Mental retardation. Neonatal thrombocytopenic purpura. That is the blueberry muffin lesions that I told you. That can be uh, seen here okay then hepatitis bone lesions meningoencephalitis diabetes mellitus progressive rubella panencephalopathy so major organs only will be affected like cns is affected cvs is affected here and the liver is also affected bones are affected eyes are affected so that's a very important thing for us to recognize and treat early here you can see the baby with congenital cataract and here these are the blueberry muffin lesions okay the arrow mark shows you those so they are bluish purplish uh, lesions Diagnosis is mostly clinically you diagnose this or sometimes you can do like serology, IgM, IgG antibodies against uh, the rubella can also be found. If there's IgM antibody, active infection. If IgG antibody, after 2 to 3 weeks, IgG will come into picture. But if there is recurrent of only IgM present, then that can tell you congenital uh, rubella syndrome. Recurrence of only like whenever you uh, test it, it's only IgM, then you can see this even after 2 to 3 weeks of infection as well. Okay, so specific IgM or reverse transcriptase PCR can be done. That can be done during pregnancy as well. IgM antibodies, congenital infection, if it is there in persistently, okay. Histopathology, not very pathognomic. Here you see uh, perivascular infiltrate and mild spongiosis. There are certain cells which are seen here and these are atypical lymphocytes, okay. Those, those cells are called as Turk cells which are seen here, okay. They are seen in the blood as well as the cutaneous infiltrate of the lesions that you see and also in the blood you can see certain atypical, no? not like normal lymphocytes, atypical lymphocytes and those are called as Turk cells. Differential diagnosis would be any disease which presents with maculopapular rash and that's mostly viral infections in childhood, okay? It can be measles, scarlet fever, certain drugs also can cause those infectious mononucleosis and secondary syphilis. So these are the several um, differential diagnoses that has to be kept in mind. Treatment would be supportive care. Symptomatic care has to be take, uh, done. And then uh, specific vigilance for pregnant women is important here. Antenatal diagnosis with fetal vein sampling for RNA viral culture is available. 
active immunization uh, is practiced in some countries with live attenuated virus especially in uk it is practiced okay uh, given with mmr and susceptible population is immunized uh, in pregnancy you should not give vaccination okay until four weeks you avoid it vaccination cdc recommends that two doses are given you one between 12 months to 15 months one vaccine you give and one more or four years to six years you give one more vaccine okay so two doses of vaccine have to be given uh, teens and adults can also be vaccinated and they should be up to date for mmr vaccination that's important to prevent the occurrence of uh, rubella infection so as i told you i discuss about the various diseases you have first disease second disease third disease fourth disease fifth disease sixth disease based upon when the rash arises in the uh, infection okay so first disease would be rubeola measles you remember one or two it's enough so first disease would be rubeola and measles and etiology is measles virus second disease would be scarlet fever scarletina which is streptococcus pyogenes third disease is rubella or german measles it's also called as german measles okay that's rubella virus fourth disease is uh, you can remember it as staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome but it does disease is that and it's also staphylococcus aureus here which causes it releases exfoliative toxin that causes the staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome fifth disease would be erythema infectiosum which is erythrovirus or parvovirus b19 sixth disease is exanthem subitum roseola infatum which is a sudden rash and that is HHV 6 or HHV 7 that is human herpes virus 6 or 6B uh, in particular and HHV 7.